Hey, and welcome to this uh, rather spontaneous session right now. So today I want to look at something we have looked at earlier, uh, which is the CPU tool. And we're going to work with the Vision 5.2 board again. So I already got the board hooked up and connected, and I have changed the switches so that it boots from the spy flash where we still have the vendor somewhere running, which is currently U-boot. And with U-boot, we're now going to load a Linux kernel, which I've prepared to include something called CPU-D, the CPU daemon. So if you uh, want to uh, check out the previous video that we did on the Vision 5.1, where we were CPUing around, uh, go check it out, definitely. Um, otherwise, I will just give a very brief intro now to the tool. And well, let's see if we actually get this set up here. So just a very few things that you can already see here. So I have checked out the repository, uh, which is the Linux repository from Star5. So they have their own fork, uh, where you know they develop like their own features that they need for uh, their SOC, the JH7110. And so now I just fetched a fresh update from just you know another day ago. And uh, what you can see up here is uh, the tags that had been pushed. So there are two which I found interesting: Vision 5.2 Devel and Vision 5.2 Upstream. Um, and I chose to uh, just set up a local work tree for one of them, uh, which is the upstream branch. So in the upstream branch, I saw they are using uh, Linux 6.3, the current release candidate, I think. So that is fairly recent, and I hope that mostly everything works. So disclaimer, I haven't tried anything yet so far with this. Um, all I've just done is uh, verify that the board will come up when I um, flipped over the switches. And so let's actually do that now and let's uh, turn on the board again. So we should now see something, it's booting, and now it's saying hit any key, uh, blah de blah So now here on the left hand side, what I still have is all the stuff that I gathered for the Vision 5.1. And we were using another tool here so that we could actually serve an image over the network. So there is a protocol which is called TFTP, uh, the T being for I actually forgot what, I, th I think it was something like uh, 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 along the meaning of convenient or something. Um, anyway, so the TFTP tool uh, we're going to use is actually called Sender. So Sender is a tool that supports multiple protocols, including TFTP, also DHTP, and that is something we're going to need today. So what I've done is after I had built that kernel, I had uh, copied it over to this directory here uh, that we also used earlier, which is just called TFTP home. And now there is a file which is called vf2.m image. So that is the image we're going to use. So what I'm now going to do is I'm running center. I'm using this interface here, which is just, um, you know, some uh, USB uh, ethernet thing I have hooked up here. We're using this TFTP dir called TFTP home. And we're listening on this interface. So uh, the interface this IP belongs to. This is the IP address I have on my host here. So if, uh, if we look at IP and then we grab for it um, or not, uh, IPA and then grab for it. You see, this is uh, one of my addresses. Uh, we can actually grab like for a bit more. Let's say, let's uh, get some context here. So you can see this is the adapter here, that one. Uh, and the IP address. So let's run this tool right now. I'm just gonna type my password because it's <laughs> running on privileged ports in part, uh, like for DHCP, for example. And now what we can do again is we can just run DHCP again here. Um, now on the left hand side, you see, hey, uh, it's offering us to add this here um, or another thing. Uh, so I will just cancel this very quickly. This is for the DHCP request. So it doesn't just respond randomly to DHCP, but we can now set this up so that it actually, you know, gets a, a well-known address for uh, a predefined interface. And the interface is just defined through the MAC address. So for IPv6, it's uh, UU and then the MAC address, just, you know, without anything. Um, or we could also use IPv4. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much at this point. Um, so yeah, I, I would just go with um, IPv4 just for convenience. So we're going to edit this uh, file that we're using for uh, our, our hosts. Actually, uh, we, we already had this. So we're going to say this is now whatever, 16822. Huh, we were using 42 
already for the VF cube. Is this actually the same interface? No, it's not. Um, so this is now, uh, I, I've just uh, used this for some other experiment. Uh, yeah, I will, I will just go with the same thing again and comment out the previous one. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I will just say dash hosts, uh, host to, P please don't uh, mind the file name here right now. Um, it's just host file. Okay, it's dash host file, host to, and again, we're running the HTTP and boom off we go so now we got an address here um i'm not sure if there is like ip or something here uh or whatever anyway um we, we should now be able i think we have do we have ping right so we can say ping and we can use the address here so that should now work it says a uh, host is alive so it's it really just i think fired off one message and you know then <laughs> was happy uh, getting back some result Anyway, so this means we can now load from there. Um, and how do we load? So we can say tftp uh, boot, I think. And let's see if we get some help here. File h does not exist. So, okay, I guess we just um, pass the file name. So we're going with, uh, what was it? vf2.m image over here, right? Like this. So it's just loading over the file. That will take a second or two. And, you know, then we have the file on the other side and then we can already use our uh, CPU command. So I'm just going to copy my uh, CPU vision 5 command for, well, let's just go with a 2 over there. Um, so this is now just for convenience. Uh, we're going to say blah, de blah. Um, so instead of vision 5, we're just using the IP address here, uh, like this, that would be fine. So we can now say CPU vision 5.2.sh, that is just the convenience script, and then we should be able to do something like uh, bbin ls. So we will see if that works in a moment. Uh, so this has now been uh, transferred. Um, now the question is, where did it transfer it? it it's loading to this address here. So now we should see, uh, now we should be able to say mboot or boot. I think it's boot m and then this here. Um, well, that almost worked. Oh, uh, that doesn't include a device tree. I thought it did. Um, image is not a flattened device tree. Must reset the board to recover. Okay, um, great. So let's see, it says loading init RAM disk. It says flattened device tree. Um, huh, interesting. So let's actually see what we got. So um, this M image file is uh, this here. So if we say file on this, um, it says U boot legacy, uh, U image, uh, whatever. It's a multi-file image, not compressed. Uh, this isn't that large. This is the load address, entry point, and so on. And I think they have something like, uh, so, so some tool for, um, you know, using those things uh, with. So like some something where you can, you know, say read the M image and whatsoever. Uh, I actually use it in my build.sh. So yeah, there is, there is MK image. And I think there is also another tool which can just list everything. Um, so yeah, this is uh, sort of the command I was using, just uh, you know the variant for having the uh, Vision 5.2. So this here is from you know previous attempt uh, iterating over things, so that we ended up with this here. Huh. Let's see. So I'm doing this here. Um, so let, let's actually see if uh, this gets us some something. So we should have this here. Oh, and then slash DTS. Uh, I, I hope I got this right. Otherwise, this is the error. Okay, so this actually looks fine. I think it actually did find some the FDT because it's saying like, uh, huh. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I just spotted the issue. So, yeah. Um, 
this is the dt source file, but we actually need the dtb file. So that is the blob, which is like the compiled version. So let's just uh, rerun build.sh. And then we just, um, you know, copy over this file again. So this is like uh, vf. No, this is just m image. And now I will put it in this other directory, vision51, vftp home. And then it's vf 2m image. Okay, got it. So we're going to run this again. We just need to transfer the new file. Um, so, so don't mind if you couldn't just fully follow along how I was building this image here. Uh, let's actually keep the script here open so that you can see how it works. So essentially to build Linux, and we need to cross compile here because I'm on a different architecture on this host, I need to set the architecture. So in our instance, it's with, it's with five. We need to set cross compile. So this is a variable uh, which gives you like, you know, the, the prefix for uh, all the build tools. So we're using the RISC-5 64 Linux GNU something. So this will uh, be um, appended with a specific tool that we need to use like GCC or LD and so on. So, you know, this just means, so if you use the linker, you would use RISC-5 64 Linux GNU LD and so on. Um, yeah, there is also a different tool chain I was using at some point. So this here is just commented out. Now this here is really just to stitch together uh, the path to the DTB. And as you can see, there are two here. So there is a version 1.3B and version 1.2A. I don't really know which one I have and it doesn't really matter to me too much right now, I guess, because um, we would just expect some minor differences. Um, now this here is just the make command to actually build everything. So I had already configured Linux. And then I'm just listing the path to the image file and the image file is really the elf, uh, which holds the Linux kernel. Um, I did this here for no reason at some point, I guess we can even remove this. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, no, I actually did this on purpose. So I need a, uh, I, I need a file here, uh, just because of the, um, U boot syntax. So U boot expects me. So this MK image tool here is from U boot expects me to say dash D. And then I would supply the different uh, parts that make it into the eventual image, which is this file here. And so the parts are, well, uh, the image that we have, which is exactly this here. Um, yeah, I, I could even use the variable in here, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, then the init RD and then comes the device tree. And so, yeah, here I need to use the DTB. So let's see again uh, if we can boot from here now and it looks fine. So the kernel is coming up and we're now booted into CPU D. So what this means is, um, so first of all, we got the CPU banner up here. Uh, what we can do now is first of all, uh, we can check the, oh, let's actually check the IP addresses. Whoopsies. It looks like we don't have the, um, we, we don't have the ethernet interfaces right now. Uh, but this is what we're going to need. So uh, now comes the dirty part where we actually need to mess with the configuration again. And so here you see the actual Linux configuration that you would otherwise use anyway. Um, so I just pre-configured something. I was hoping it would work. So apparently it doesn't. And now the question is why. Um, I'm not even sure how this Ethernet connector uh, works, like, you know, what's sitting behind it and so on. So I guess uh, we got to figure this out. How do we figure this out actually? Um, well, let's have a look at the device tree itself. So let's see, uh, I, was, I was already listing this. Um, now let's have a look at that file. Let's see if we can find some information on what drivers are actually needed here. So this year, RGMII, uh, GMAX0, oh, that looks like a native interface. Interesting, um, it, it could still be something else. Oh, right, here it's it's saying we need the modicum phi. So let's search for modicum first in the menu. Let's search for modicum. Uh, as you can see, that is not configured, so we need to configure it. Okay, good. Um, what else do we have? That might actually be it already. Um, yeah, looking fine so far. Let's, let's, just, um, let's just write this out. Let's just save this. Uh, and then rebuild again and then reboot and see if that works. Um, yeah. So as you can see, this is actually very quick, uh, building the initial, uh, kernel image to like, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. So 
that's it's really not too horrible um let me just quickly reset the board here so i will just power it off and on again or can we even use reboot oh no we don't have reboot uh do we have shutdown oh yeah we do have shutdown um i didn't pass the reboot switch anyway yeah i'll just power off and on again so yeah this is now trying to auto boot whatever trying to bring up ethernet um we're going to do yeah, whatever we can cancel this uh we're going to do the same thing again so first with dhcp then we say uh let's actually write this down here let's take some notes uh boot call it boot uh so we need the tftp boot command which we got here there so this here uh and then we say what do we say oh actually let's go with this so first we dhtp then we tftp boot and then we say boot m and this address right so this is boot m this address uh yeah marvelous so this is the command we actually need to run and we could actually make this the default command even yeah just don't really bother right now so i would just you know copy paste this right here very quick um i did that for the uh, vision 5.1 so that you know it was a bit quicker to iterate um I, I just hope this will now work and uh give us the interfaces in the notes if we need them um otherwise if it doesn't we will have to <laughs> look at the configuration and the menu again okay so ipa do we have it no we don't so let's see again um what else do we need so if you look at the uh, network drivers in the notes there is already tons of them so there is all of this stuff here for example uh, i had uh, intentionally disabled a bunch uh, of things here uh, let's see do we have something uh, from store 5 no we don't so yeah there there is this stuff here like synopsis and whatever um yeah it's actually a good question what we have on the board so yeah let's look at the device trick and let's see if we can figure it out from here so yeah we will look at the dtsi file this is like a you know an include file and then we're just overriding a few things or extending a bit um so let's see dtsi this year um do we have ether oh look it says ethernet zero equals ngmax zero and so on so what else do we get nothing let's search for gmag uh there's this here rgmii rmii so this is for like gigabit ethernet and this is for like just 100 megabit ethernet oh there we go mm -hmm. look uh looks good so this is synopsis design where so this is dw it's like so synopsis are making the peripherals so they don't make it themselves at star five they just you know buy it in um and then you know just glue it into their soc design in a sense um so this is design where mac mdio so mdio I'm not, I'm not sure if this is like an md bus or something um but yeah let's let's see so we need synopsis synopsis design where ethernet maybe maybe that's it i have no idea to be honest let's just build in those two here um let's see mdio do we get anything if we search for mdio look at that um we don't even have mdio configured how do we get mdio configured so i guess we need something from specific vendors or something um huh so these are like the um possible combinations that you can use in order to get mdio support net vendor theorist net vendor this and that there is like tons of variants of doing this um wow so yeah i also selected cadence devices so cadence is like the other company uh just like 
um, like like Synopsys. So those two are like very large providers of these uh, uh, peripherals and so on. So they also make like DRAM controllers, spy controllers, you know, all of that stuff. Okay, so where do we where do we get this? Let's search again for MDIO. So what do we have here? Um, yeah, maybe maybe let's just go with ALX up there. So ALX is like Atheras. Um, yeah, we, we just need something to select MDIO, I guess. It's, it's a bit weird. But there is also like other like specific MDIO drivers, B53, I have no idea what that is. Oh, that is Broadcom. Yeah, so BCM or Broadcom is like uh, one of the um, companies making also lots of chips. So yeah, you, you may know them from especially networking. They do a lot of networking. And also the um, SLC made uh, for the Raspberry Pi or use on the Raspberry Pi actually. Yeah, so yeah, those are mostly like, uh, there. there's like, no, um, I think there is no open firmware even for that stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, what, what else do we have here? Oh, lots, lots of stuff actually. So there is this year FCC, apparently Freescale something, more Freescale, and another chip vendor again, A speed, Broadcom again. Oh, look, MDIO bus itself. Uh, that is active. Huh. Okay, uh, I have an idea. Let's uh, let's search again for a synopsis. And let's, of course, that doesn't get us anything. Uh, or design were. Let's see if we get a hint here uh, somehow um, regarding networking. Uh, of course, we don't get anything here. Um, great. Uh, who, whoever did this. Yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to track down device drivers, unfortunately. Huh. I mean, maybe, maybe that was already enough. Like, I, I just have my doubts here because this is saying like enterprise ethernet, whatever. Uh, it doesn't sound like something you would have on this SBC here. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's something else yeah there there is like a website you can use for uh you know searching for drivers but then again uh i just forget the name of that website and uh, yeah this stuff is really hard to navigate okay so let's do the following um let's look at the uh config uh for the generic this year dev config so this is like for a generic uh risk 5 device wh whatever it is you know like any soc whatever any board and let's see if we can find something design where ew um we we don't of course so it might be that it was automatically selected by like net something like net every, everything net being selected let's get net 9p this is important so we always want 9p the protocol that we use so yeah uh, there is this year net devices it might be that it just selects you know all the ethernet drivers and so on so these here are specific ones like stmx so this is like i actually forgot what it was it could be st micro but i think it was actually not st micro but it was like yeah, it was not, it was something else. Uh, micro semi, I don't know, I don't care. Um, yeah, what else? Yeah, no, no more, no more network here. Uh, it might also be that it's not even in this um, configuration there. So let's, let's see. Um, do we have this in the other branch so i'm using the development branch currently no i'm using the upstream branch right so let's see if we have this in the other branch which was the uh 
So there is this here, upstream and eval, and I'm using eval. So let's see, uh, no, I'm using upstream. Let's see if we get this in the eval branch. So let's see if we have a config file in this branch, which sits at origin, um, or it should, no revisions match the, why? Oh, is it, is it called upstream? Git, git, remote, dash e. Yeah, it is, okay. So it's upstream. Yeah, this is unfortunately, it takes a while. Um, let's see, so this here is changing the default configuration, GT911. I guess some people wanted to use that. Um, whatever that has to do with the touchscreen. Uh, what do we have here? Um, Okay, they went back and forth on it. This is for the hardware RNG, random number generator. Uh, these are like tons of, tons of changes. Oh dear. Um, yeah. DTS, perf events and stuff like that. So perf for performance. Yeah, what else do we have here? Yeah, I guess uh, that is why you should prepare a bit more if you want to do something very spontaneous. But we're doing something spontaneous after all, so all good here. Oh, look, there, uh, support vision 5.2. Let's look at that. Uh, vision 5.2 dev config. Um, yeah, we are going to just do a checkout on this. So we're going to say git checkout, checkout, upstream, and then we are going to less the bar quest 5 config star 5 vision 5.2. And we're going to search for ethernet. Oh, look at that. Right. Oh, do you see this here? Design where Mac star five plat. Okay, so this is like a platform specific. Do we have this um, somewhere? Of course, it's only in the dev config there. Um, okay, so we are on the upstream branch here and apparently, um, the patches for supporting the ethernet uh, that we have here are not yet in this branch, I assume, uh, at, at least looking at this here. So yeah, huh. that, is, uh, that is a bit unfortunate. Okay, so I guess we're not getting much further with this here. Um, we will need to check out the other branch. So the thing is, um, if we now check out this branch, you, you will see something. So first of all, it like takes hours. We're going to make a backup co copy of config. Uh, that was config, let's call it upstream. Right here, uh, git status. What was it saying here? Um, merge branch something, that's where it is right now. That there are some uh, objects which were already built, like for the purgatory, for example, which is what might get us in trouble here. Anyway, um, yeah, we are going to very likely have to do a make clean and so on. So yeah, I guess their uh, kernel is really not yet. Yeah, look at that. So. Yeah, their kernel was not yet um, ported enough over to the other branch. So this here is what we're going to need. Um, this is a variant of the ST micro. Oh, this is actually ST micro after all. Okay, so yeah, 
they glued something together from ST Micro and Synopsis Design Work. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I would need to just redo the whole configuration. So we, we can say a make we make a make clean and then run the build script. I'm not sure if this is going to work at all. Uh, it might just yeah ask us a bunch of things. Yeah, uh, this is now the other SOC here, uh, GMAC, FPGA, GMAC, doesn't really matter too much right now, actually, I guess. Maximum number uh, number of CPUs, suspend to RAM and standby. Uh, yeah. Suspend, skip, sync, suspend to disk. Nobody needs that right now here. Opportunistic sleep, no, 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 no. There is a bunch of options which are, uh, you know, entirely different on this kernel here uh, because this kernel uh, is like, I don't know how many versions behind, it's from like a few years ago or something. Um, yeah, may maybe earlier last year or something. So, I just need to say no to a bunch of options. So these are all like the tons of drivers that you have in Linux. Um, HID bus support, oh, I don't really want that. Whatever. Um, yeah, it won't be too horrible, I hope. So usually building a kernel is uh, you know, a matter of like 10 minutes, as I said. Um, let's see if we actually get those 10 minutes. It might be a bit longer. And it might even be that the uh, stream here will be choking because, you know, uh, it will be very, very busy. Oh dear. So much stuff in here. You know, the thing is, um, you would probably want to read all of these options here in a way, uh, but then again, you don't. So what we want is a very minimal configuration so that the kernel builds fast, uh, but also so that we don't really have to, uh, whatever, uh, crypto engine is not really important right now. We just build it as a module, whatever. So, you know, you want a configuration, um, you know, that is uh, actually very uh, stripped down so that you, you know, just get the bare minimum that you need for, you know, just, you know, continuing with whatever you want. And then you can have a generic kernel at some point from some distributions that you actually boot into. So this is what we're uh, intending to do here eventually. Um, yeah, let's let's see if this here works. Oh, what we can do in the meantime actually is uh, we can we can take a backup of the uh, other kernel. So let's let's see. DFTP Helm, we have two image. Let's move this to df2 uh, upstream dot m image. So like this. Yeah. Can already power off the board for now. So now up there you see building uh, like all these uh, tons of modules or well, those are the object files now, which are actually the modules in Linux mostly. And then there will be, uh, you know, just uh, stitched together again in the end. So yeah, like building a kernel just means you just build a thousand of these objects and you know, then you have a linker script and that will just, you know, put everything together again and uh, yeah, we, w we will get there. I hope it won't take too long. Yeah, at least like when I did this like two days ago to, you know, just prepare something that turned out not to work today. Um, it took me like, I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 minutes to build everything. So what do we do for entertainment in the meantime? I have no idea. Mm. Well, um, we, we can actually talk a bit about CPU again because some people may not even know what it is and uh, you know what we're uh, intending to do here. So 
CPU is essentially a tool that you know connects you to another machine, and then that machine becomes part of your machine in a sense. So uh, the idea is that you can actually import other resources over the network, you know, and then just use them as if they were something local. So just imagine your Ethernet being just like your USB port or something, right? So you connect anything and you can just use it right away. So I, just like I'm connecting my mouse here, now I can use my mouse. I don't even need to think about it. And in the same fashion, the idea of CPU is I have something connected via Ethernet to my laptop here. So now I can just use it right away as if it were just some other peripheral essentially. So imagine I just you know have more CPUs connected to my machine now. And that's also where the name comes from because it's really just like, you know, another CPU that we're using. So all we need to do is, and you know, we already uh, prepared this over here. Uh, we would just say CPU, then the host we're connecting to, and that is uh, hidden behind the script here. And you know, then the command to run. And that command, well, it can be something remote, it can be a local command, uh, and so on. TV, no, uh, DTV, no such word directory. Yeah, um, that is uh, because it's something different here. So let's see what we have here. Oh, wow. Uh, we're going to use uh, this here, just DTV. Um, and we're going to exit from, exit from here. No, we don't want to save this, but we want to change our build.sh. And we're just going with this here. Uh, now we just run the build script again. Uh, can step, why? Why, why, why can't you step the file? Hang on, hang on. What? Did they write it in a different way? Uh, yeah, they wrote it in a different way. Okay, look. Um, they also have like tons of other variants here. I have no idea what those are. Uh, yeah, I guess I will just use that one here. Um, I, I hope that's going to work. So they just call it that, just that. Okay, now let's build again. And we copy again. We copy the M image over there. We fire up the board again. Uh, we are going to copy and paste this boot command here. Now, like this. Uh-oh. There we go, okay. Right, so um, just for uh, you know, uh, your amusement, this here is a 5.15.0 kernel. Uh, it was called trick or treat for whatever reason, they always give it fancy names. Um, uh, it doesn't come up, it doesn't come up. It doesn't work, forget that. Okay. So um, apparently uh, we failed on this here, so we're going to stop this for now. I will need to do some digging. Um, so we have one kernel um, that works at least to some degree, and we have one kernel. Well, that doesn't even come up. So yeah, uh, we're going to figure this out at some other point. Anyway, um, thank you very much for tuning in, and take care. See you some other time. Goodbye.